Okay. Tell me about I it. mean, this is surreal. Where, I've heard when was this? Was, when, when during the earthquake. 88. 88. This yeah. is in Armenia? In Armenia. And there was some guy. What was his name? Armen. Okay. And, and uh, so he has taken his son to the school in the morning, you know, and of course he says, uh, calls him, he says, uh, wherever you are, I am there, you know, I'll help you, okay, without knowing that things would happen. So anyway, the school collapses, and he knows which classroom his son was located close to. <clears throat> so, uh, after the earthquake, the father goes there, it's a pile of rocks and things like that. She starts taking, you know, with bare hand, you know, I mean, opening up, you know. Meanwhile, she's saying, Armin, Armin, oh, well, I don't know what his name is. He calls and he, you know, and he does it for 10, 20, 24 hours, you know. He keeps on digging. And everybody says, hey, by now it's too late, you know, your son, the kids are gone. <clears throat> no, it says, I promised him that I would be with him and I'm going to do it. And he keeps on digging, he keeps on digging, taking rocks and things like that. I think uh, for two days or a half, two and a half days afterwards, comes to the point and he hears some noise, you know. Uh, and he says, oh man, are you? You know, yeah, he says, uh, we are, uh, you know, protected here, and uh, my classmates, my friends, were all hopeless, but I told them that my dad will come, that my dad will be here. And sure enough, you know, the guy takes his son and a group of other people. But people had told him, I said, hey, don't do it, that's enough. You're, it's too late, you know, this or that. And I have heard this, I mean, preachers like uh, MacArthur and other, you know, top, top notch ministers bringing that as, a, as an example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it goes to show that the, that Armin, you know, or you know, his, or I think it was his son's name, Armin, 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 uh, that he had told him that I'll be with you, you know, I, you know, and sure enough, oh yeah, you know, one of the reasons why uh, I mean, there were several reasons why us students in school didn't give any problem <clears throat> to our teachers or anybody, you know, was because we knew that we were sent to school on account of great sacrifices from our parents. Man, I mean, it wasn't free education, but you know, begging and this and that, and so we wouldn't waste our time. Hey, they are sending us here with great sacrifice. Let's not, uh, waste our time and also of course we wanted to go ahead so that we would work and support the parents my my dad was a good dad a generous guy and 
uh, what can I say? I mean, I could see working hard, working hard, you know, to support us. He was, uh, uh, when he comes from uh, genocide, you know, tries all sorts of works, they say, <clears throat> okay, we want to build this place. Oh, he says, I can do it. He hasn't done it. <laughs> you know, later on I saw some of his words, both in Lebanon, uh, Ali, called a place, Ali, he built a hotel, and in Israel, he built three-story high building to a dentist, and he had workers and things like that. Uh, <clears throat> I'll tell you an incident that happened to him. Please. Okay. They're building it. It's on third story or, you know, higher. And a plank, you know, here, uh, two by eight, something like that, sticking out. So he goes to the edge to see what happens. Lo and behold, you know, the weight, loops. you know, he falls down. And <clears throat> the thing that the board, you know, clips and his workers, they see him falling and they say, oh, he's dead. So they go all downstairs, you know, there's nobody there. And what happens, that flips, comes and hits him, and pushes him on the second floor. <laughs> so he looks down, he says, whom are you looking for? <laughs> How did he get there? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh boy, he was a good man, he was a good-hearted guy. But he was a chain smoker, man, he would smoke. I mean, everybody used to. I mean, not the Protestants, but the Lusorgers, everybody, you know, smoking. He would smoke two and a half, three packs of cigarettes, one after the other, you know. He worked, uh, let me see, I think he worked in Haifa, was it in Haifa or in Lam I think it was in Haifa, a uh, British soldiers, uh, you know, airport, and the bombs and things like that, they were, uh, the Germans were bombing, <clears throat> and he was afraid, and one time his, you know, um, fallen on the ground and looks a guy with uh, uh, hard drinks going, giving, you know, to the captains or big people. He jumps and takes one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, they complain about him. The count of things is, yes, he did the right thing, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, man. But see, here's another thing about mom. My uncles were quite well off people. Seta's dad, Coco's dad, and my dad, you know, uh, passed away, just passed away. And he had, my dad, had established glass business that later on his brothers took it over. And my grandfather was there and so Vaskin, after passing away of my dad, you know, Vaskin goes and asks my granddad or our granddad, says Mitzayri, he was bitlisi, mom, bitlisi, so 
wanted to get married with mom. And my mom asked us, Faskin and me, this, well, shall I get married, you know, to this? And for us, you know, oh, this guy is a stranger, you know? Mm -hmm. No. And she didn't get married. Later on, I told my mom, I say, why did you ask us that question? You should have gotten married. We could have been in Fresno. We could have been Fresno Indians. <laughs> anyway, but you know, she wouldn't do it because of us. Man, she was a good mom. You know, when she was in Sa uh, San Francisco, she would get the SSI, mm -hmm. you know. She would give me, you know, I'm talking to for the Lord, $20, $40, take it for the kids, for the kids, for the kids. And mom would say, oh, Trangu Dasire. Well, mom, I haven't given a cent to my mom. Yeah. I mean, I saw a lot of things in that respect, but I know the sacrifices of my parents, and we couldn't waste our lives. We couldn't, <clears throat> weren't interested in, you know, the, the um, tricky type of things. No, let's do it. Let's work and see if we can be of help. But uh, parents, particularly fathers, well, fathers and mothers are important. You know, when I think of Gizi and of Melo, okay, you people are divorced. That's bad. I mean, you're not doing together, you know, helping together. But at least, at least they can see Dad. They can talk to Dad. And Dad is interested in I mean, you know, American uh, guys uh, in your situation, forget it, no way. But no, you love them. You, we pray for them, we pray because they're important for us. Oh yeah. I mean, our upbringing was all together different, all together. You know, Abraham Halevlian, his dad, I mean, he, they were one of the rich Armenians in Le Beirut, Lebanon. His dad was graduate from Paris about suits, you know, and they had a big office that the elite of Lebanon, I mean, the president, the vice president, they, that kind of people would come to be, you know, to have uh, <clears throat> suits and things like that. And they were rich. And Abraham's dad was a good Christian guy. He helped, he helped a lot of believers to go out and be missionaries. Anyway, so, uh, one day, uh, he was my classmate, Abraham. I <clears throat> uh, said, Abraham, you know, they talk about uh, hashish, you know, I mean, wheat and things like that. He says, I say, where, where is this place? Oh, he says, Burj, how would you know, don't, I mean, Burj, don't you know the place? Yeah, okay, that's all, everything is there. People, would go and buy and smoke and this, the government, cops, anything. 
It's your life. And we didn't even consider, I mean, it wouldn't cross our minds. Oh, to do that. Oh, you, you, do this sometimes. I never smoked cigarette. My brother didn't smoke cigarette, you know, this and that. We never touched the thing, even though pff, everything was there. You know, because of our upbringing, okay? You're a Christian, go to church, school, home. School, that's it. That was, that was uh, the center where we would revolve in uh, church, school, home, church, school, home, period. We would go uh, twice on Sundays, twice morning and evening services. And then we had Tuesday and Thursday meetings during the week, prayer meeting and Bible study. And man, my Bible teachers, you know, Turian and uh, Ajemian and things like that knew the scriptures. They were Plymouth brethren. They were, you know, they gave us, you know, the word of God. And uh, I would go on Thursdays, pray, go to study this and that, you know, the whole thing. So when I accepted Christ, when the Lord worked in my heart and my life was changed, and I would tell them my story, you know, some people would shake their head. They say, wait a minute, you were Christian before. You know, what was wrong with you? And so on. Well, you can attend church, you know, doesn't make you saint. I mean, <laughs> uh, can you imagine even the devil, one of them, um, Judah, you know, to be filled with the devil amongst the twelve? Anyway, so uh, they, they were surprised that, wait a minute, you acted like a Christian, you prayed like a Christian, you do this, 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 this. How can you say that you were not born again? So, one, my uncle, Seto's dad, you know, I gave him my testimony. I said, Emil, you know, this is what happened. This is, you know, I became a Christian. He looked at me and says, what are you talking about? He said, uh, uh, you were a nice guy, you were okay, what was the problem with you, you know? I mean, how could, you're saying that you weren't Christian. Uh, and uh, I told him, I never forget. I never forgot and he said, <coughs> I said, Uncle, you knew me from outside. You didn't know my heart. You know, he stopped, thought for a moment. He says, you're right. You're right. He was a good man. Uh, Coco's uh, dad was a good man. My uncles were okay, you know, but they were tight. People here. You know. Have you seen Angel? Have you visited her? No. No. Okay, that's it. Do you want to? No. We're here. Maybe you should. I don't know. Maybe. It's a good opportunity. Yeah, it won't come again after two weeks. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh. I wonder if uh, Melo can join us when we go home so that when you come back, you won't be all by yourself. 
You can ask my love. I will. I will. And I'll tell her that I'll take you to Target. <laughs> and then you better take her. Oh, oh I will. Because it cost me. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, one time it cost me $600 or so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But look, now she's building a... Uh, oh, yeah, now she's... Uh, she's okay, she's grown she's up. She's business-minded now. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Now she realizes. See, uh, <clears throat> Cheyenne doesn't have that type of thing. No, no. way. Here, she's um, 